All right, how's it going, y'all? By the time you're watching this video, Unified Network Application 9.4.11 will be available, and it comes with some major changes to the way firewall rules work and some other really interesting things that I'm very excited to see out of this update. They've gone through and essentially changed the entire routing setup to now being object-based, which is actually how I like to work in general. It really allows for you to trivially add things in later on, and I think it helps maintain a larger network much better by instead of having to remember rules per device, instead you just create groups. And then you know, okay, next time you have a device with the same group, all you do is you just add it to that group and you're off to the races and all of those special applications and things that you've done to it, all those rules just come right on end. They've also gone through and added in a policy section that'll kind of bring together all of your policy rules into one pane of glass. You can still kind of separate them out. So I'm interested to see if people enjoy that or not. I think of port forwarding as totally separate than everything else, but it could make sense for some people and you can easily toggle between the views, which I do think is very useful, as well as a whole bunch of other features. So let's just go ahead and check it out. So right now I am running a unified controller and currently I am in the early access status, but by the time you're seeing this video, it will be fully out. And we're running 9.4.11 and controller OS actually 4.3.9 on this UCG Max. And this right here are the release notes for this application. And it really comes down to these three major updates that I'm gonna talk about here. The object-oriented networking, the new policy table, and WAM magic. I'm gonna kinda of go through and show all those, and then some improvements. And so there's a lot of stuff in here, and I kinda of wanna go ahead and skip over the object-oriented networking stuff and go into the improvements, because there's a lot more stuff that needs to be said and go through and check out all their new settings in here. First off, I know a lot of people really care about IP6. They actually have put in a lot more calories into IP6 routing, and you can do a whole lot more. I don't think we're going to be able to still run an IP6 only stack. Quite frankly, not a lot of people have an IP6 only stack. I don't know of anybody who's ever really successfully done it, but IP6 compatibility is coming on through and eventually this will be something important. We've been saying IP6 is coming for the last 20 years and I don't know if it's ever actually gonna come, but it is important to have that compatibility. They've gone through and added in just some basic stuff into the dashboard that we'll go ahead and check out here. Nothing too interesting. There's not too much here. They just moved around some of my menus again. Multicast, I do know a lot of people who are using multicast DNS. That's where you basically have your like Apple TV that broadcasts to the network. Hey, I'm an Apple TV. And then devices can reach out to the Apple TV all without actually requiring the Apple TV itself to be able to like talk and initialize those connections. They have a lot more granular design to be able to actually not just broadcast that across everything, across every AP, but really say who is allowed to send those things out, which is great for security. The content filtering side is actually very interesting to me. So now when something gets blocked, essentially it has an option to create a, hey, this site was blocked for X, Y, and Z reason. However, the internet runs on a thing called HTTPS, which is why your router can't interject ads into websites anymore. Back when everything was HTTP, your ISP actually could just sneak ads on into any website because they had that ability. Now, a router cannot add stuff into a website without first breaking HTTPS. And this page will show a, this connection is not private warning. I'm sure anybody who's ever set up a router has seen a, this connection is not private warning. But now a really interesting thing that they're doing, which I think makes a lot of sense, is for those users who are adding in identity, it will automatically install the router certificate so it will actually be trusted. Now this is a very enterprise feature and this is something that is really, really, really polished and one of the reasons why having a full stack of networking where your entire VPN, your identity, your access is all under the exact same network can be very powerful. Now it also does worry me a little bit because Identity is a paid subscription thing, and I think that's reasonable. But one of Unify's best features by far is the fact that not very many of their things require subscription, and the things that do require subscription are normally very sensical. Like, hey, there's not a reasonable way to do this without a subscription, but stuff like this is where there's a lot of great features kind of behind a subscription, which 
I hope they don't continue working in that path. Unify is growing and taking over a lot of places and doing a phenomenal job. And the reason why they're growing so well is the lack of subscription, in my opinion. And I hope they really keep that balanced well and we can continue to see them grow really well without having to go to a subscription tier where if you want to do a VPN, you start ending up to pay by user. So I'm hoping we don't end up there. This is obviously not that, but I just don't want us to continue down that path where maybe five or six updates from this, it, it starts looking like that. Then there's not too much stuff here, the others page, and there are a bunch of bug fixes. <laughs> the funniest one is somehow VLAN 4040 was actually hooked up to layer three switches. I have no idea how some of this stuff happened, but it were all some very, very, very specific edge cases that I had never run into. And so now let's go in and actually check out these major features that are really the reasons to update this. And this is where we have completely redone our networking again. I love and hate Unify for this. They're always updating, but they keep moving my menus around and it becomes hard to find. But over here, we have this new objects section. And this right here is where you can start building out client groups as objects. So you can really go through and instead of having to do it by device and by specific application that we're talking about here, it all brings it into one nice policy, which I'm a huge fan of this. So now your rules that you create for your VLAN and devices are all kind of just brought in together. So I'm gonna create a new group, call it laptops, and the only device on the network is this laptop. So we're gonna say, we're gonna create a new policy for laptops, and we are going to, oh, well, we don't wanna cut internet. We're going to exclude them from, from X, always on, and who knows what else. Maybe we'll also route their traffic, and we'll, we'll route their app traffic to Plex, through only WAN 2. Okay, so this right here is my rule. Basically, we create a thing for laptops, and this could be for company computers, this could be for Apple TVs, this could be for NASs, this can be kind of whatever you want it to be. And now the idea behind this is, is you create rules in a much, much broader section. Now, when you're writing these custom policies, what this stuff can access, routing rules and your quality of service rules actually kind of go together. A lot of time you're applying some combination of these settings to the same group of devices. The idea behind this is now you run all of this stuff directly through here. We have written one custom policy that has affected the quality of service, the routing rules, and we can come into our firewall zone rules. And if we come in here, we can see that exact same rule has been expressed right here. So we can see right here, no matter what interface that these laptops are on, they are blocked from Twitter. That is the idea. I think this is going to be most useful at a large corporate level where you're starting to write these much more blanket policies and be able to have stuff work across a lot of different VLANs. I think there's a lot of great stuff in here. I think the majority of people will not use this nor need to use this. I think it's gonna be very useful mostly in the large corporate environments where you just have to keep track of a lot of stuff. Like basically being able to say, all right, all Windows laptops are allowed to get to this domain to be able to handle this update and all those kinds of things. And I think this will make it a lot easier for those. But quite honestly, most small businesses, home users will never really wanna to touch this unless you're wanting to play around and learn some stuff because otherwise you're probably just doing it where appropriate. So that is the new object oriented stuff, really powerful when it comes to large scale deployments, but you're probably not touching it. And so that is our new object oriented networking. As you can see, there's immense power and immense amount of configuration that can be done here and simplify out a lot of stuff but it can also be very complex and make stuff very confusing. So it's only really probably gonna be useful for people who are actually deploying these large scale setups. All right, so now on to the next section is going to be our policy table. This is actually where they've brought in all of those individual rules and stuck it all in one place. And this is by far the thing I'm most interested to see if it works out well or not, because they have essentially just moved all of the buttons again from having headers up here to now everything's a single table operating off of this. Now, I do like that you have a very easy single source to see everything. So you can see really quickly and easily what stuff is actually implemented. And as somebody who comes into Unify setups all the time and helps people just make sure everything's looking okay, 
being able to see that nobody's touched port forwarding without having to click into port forwarding is actually really useful. I actually really like that side of things and it keeps it a lot faster to run these things. And so now if we create a new port forwarding rule, we can create a rule right here that it doesn't actually do anything. We can see it ends up in the exact same section as everything else. And so I think it allows you to still get the broad view of what's going on. And then when you need to see port forwarding, you can click on it on the sidebar right here. And I think it will take a little bit of setup. I think it will take a little bit of getting used to for people, but it is nicely done and packaged in a way that will make it quick and easy to just see what is going on. But it's definitely gonna be one of those things that if you're coming from another firewall that's more traditional, this is where it can get really confusing. So if you're somebody who's working on primarily firewall or something like that, this is gonna look pretty foreign to you until you get used to it. It's everything's there and it's at least using reasonable nomenclature, but it definitely is going to take a little while to get used to and can be very overwhelming for new people. Then finally over here, our BGP and OSPF have been switched into this little section right here for dynamic routing. So you can go ahead and set these up right here, which very few people will be using. You have to really, really, really know your networking stuff and have a good reason to use it to use either one of those. But if you need to, you absolutely need to. And so that is how the new policy table is set up. All right, so those were the really major improvements to this. I think there's a lot of interesting stuff there. Some of this is just going to be getting used to where the new buttons are and the new functionality. And I think especially the object networking is going to be very useful for the enterprise and select users on that side. But I think most home users and small businesses will probably do well to just avoid it as it may just become more confusing than is necessary if you're not doing this a ton. I think WAN magic is going to be awesome for the very small portion of the population who needs something like that. And at that time, it's going to be invaluable. All right. Well, that's going to be it for this. If you have any other questions, go ahead and put those down in the comments below. And if you want to hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one. Bye.